Hello, Celestial Explorers. Welcome back to Celestial Chronicles, where we dive deep into the wonders and mysteries of the Bible. I'm your host, and today we have an incredibly fascinating topic to discuss, one that bridges the past and the present in a way that's nothing short of miraculous. We're going to explore the most astounding prophecy in the Bible, which involves none other than Cyrus the Great. In this episode, we'll unravel the significance of different chapters in the Bible, such as chapter 6, which is said to represent the throne of God, chapter 7, representing the birth of Christ, and chapters 13 to 14, which delve into the origins of Lucifer and Satan. Then, we'll delve into the prophecy found in Isaiah 45, a prophecy written 200 years before Cyrus was even born, predicting events in his life with incredible accuracy. Isn't that intriguing? Before we dive in, make sure to hit the subscribe button and join our celestial community. We'd love to have you with us as we continue to explore these divine mysteries together. And don't forget to ring the bell so you never miss an episode. Alright, let's get started. Have you ever wondered how the Bible, written so long ago, could predict events with such precision? Or why certain chapters hold such symbolic significance? Let's embark on this journey to uncover these mysteries together. The Bible, as a sacred text, is a treasure trove of wisdom and prophecy. Its chapters are not merely sequences of events or historical records, they are profound narratives that hold layers of meaning and divine revelations. To fully comprehend the prophecy about Cyrus, it's essential to delve into the broader context of the Bible, starting with the significance of its chapters. Let's embark on this journey with chapter 6. This chapter, particularly in the book of Isaiah, is a grand depiction of the throne of God. It presents a vivid and awe-inspiring image of the Lord seated on a high and exalted throne, with the train of his robe filling the temple. This isn't just a poetic metaphor, it symbolizes God's ultimate authority and sovereignty over the universe. Imagine standing in the presence of such a majestic throne, it would be an experience of profound humility and awe. Moving forward, we arrive at chapter 7, often associated with the miraculous birth of Christ. Isaiah 7 verse 14 prophesies, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. This prophecy is nothing short of remarkable, as it was fulfilled centuries later in the New Testament with the birth of Jesus Christ. It's fascinating to ponder how these ancient texts could foresee such pivotal events with such precision. As we progress to chapters 13 and 14, we delve into the intriguing origins of Lucifer and Satan. In Isaiah 14, we encounter the famous passage, How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. This passage is often interpreted as a reference to Lucifer's fall from grace, serving as a stark reminder of the dire consequences of pride and rebellion against God. These chapters, like many others in the Bible, offer us a glimpse into the divine wisdom and prophecies that have shaped our understanding of spirituality and morality. They invite us to reflect, question, and seek deeper understanding. What are your thoughts on these chapters? Do you find these interpretations resonating with your beliefs? Your perspectives are valuable, and I encourage you to share them in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you. As we delve deeper into the rich tapestry of the Bible, we encounter one of its most astounding prophecies, the prophecy of Cyrus. Located in Isaiah 45, this prophecy stands out due to its remarkable precision and foresight. What makes it truly extraordinary is that it was penned approximately 200 years before the birth of Cyrus the Great, yet it accurately foretells significant events in his life. The prophecy, as stated in Isaiah 45 verses 1 to 3, reads, This is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of their armor, to open doors before him so that gates will not be shut, I will go before you and will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. This passage is nothing short of incredible. Isaiah not only identifies Cyrus by name but also outlines his future conquests and the divine assistance he will receive. The question that naturally arises is, how could Isaiah have possessed such knowledge two centuries in advance? This is one of those instances where the prophetic nature of the Bible truly shines, demonstrating its timeless wisdom and divine inspiration. Cyrus the Great, the founder of the Achaemenid Empire, is indeed a historical figure who achieved remarkable victories. One of his most notable accomplishments was the conquest of Babylon. 
Interestingly, he achieved this feat without engaging in battle. Instead, he ingeniously diverted the Euphrates River and led his troops through the riverbed into the city. This strategic move allowed him to enter the city through gates that were left open, aligning perfectly with Isaiah's prophecy about gates being opened before him. But the prophecy doesn't end there. Cyrus is also credited with issuing the decree that permitted the Jews to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. This act of benevolence is recorded in the book of Ezra and was also prophesied in the Bible. Isaiah 44 verse 28 states, who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd and will accomplish all that I please, he will say of Jerusalem, let it be rebuilt, and of the temple, let its foundations be laid. This prophecy's fulfillment is a testament to the Bible's divine inspiration and the accuracy of its prophecies. It also highlights Cyrus's unique role in biblical history and his impact on the Jewish people. The prophecy of Cyrus serves as a powerful reminder of God's sovereignty over history and his ability to use individuals, even non-believers, to fulfill his divine plan. The prophecy of Cyrus is not just a historical prediction, it's a profound lesson about God's omnipotence and omniscience. It shows us that God is not bound by time or space and that he can orchestrate events and guide individuals to fulfill his divine purposes. This understanding can inspire faith and awe in believers and seekers alike. What are your thoughts on this prophecy? Do you find these interpretations compelling? I encourage you to share your insights and reflections. Your perspectives are valuable, and I look forward to hearing from you. Think about it, a pagan king being called a shepherd of God and fulfilling such a significant role in Jewish history. What does this say about God's sovereignty and his ability to use anyone, regardless of their background, to fulfill his purposes? How do you interpret this remarkable alignment of historical events with biblical prophecy? This prophecy about Cyrus isn't just a fascinating historical fact, it also carries profound implications for our faith and understanding of God's plan. The precision of this prophecy reinforces the idea that the Bible is divinely inspired. It also demonstrates God's control over history and his ability to orchestrate events according to his will. Let's consider the broader impact of this prophecy. For the Jewish people, the decree of Cyrus was a turning point. After decades of exile in Babylon, they were finally allowed to return to their homeland and rebuild the temple. This event marked the beginning of the restoration of Jerusalem and had a lasting impact on Jewish identity and faith. For us today, this prophecy can strengthen our faith. It reminds us that God is in control, even when circumstances seem uncertain. It shows us that He can use anyone, even those who don't know Him, to fulfill His purposes. Isn't that a comforting thought? How do you see the hand of God in the unfolding of history? Do you think prophecies like these can provide us with a deeper understanding of God's plan for the future? As we reflect on this prophecy, it's also important to consider how it applies to our personal lives. Just as God had a plan for Cyrus, He has a plan for each of us. Sometimes, we may not understand why certain things happen or how they fit into the bigger picture. But stories like these remind us to trust in God's timing and His overarching plan. Think about your own life. Have you ever experienced a situation where things seemed to fall into place in an unexpected way? Or where you felt guided by a force beyond your understanding? How do these experiences shape your faith and your view of God's sovereignty? As we wrap up today's episode, let's take a moment to appreciate the profound mystery and majesty of God's Word. The prophecy about Cyrus is just one example of how the Bible continues to inspire and amaze us with its depth and accuracy. I hope you found this exploration of biblical prophecy as fascinating as I did. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to Celestial Chronicles and join our community of Celestial Explorers. And hit the bell icon so you never miss an episode. We'd love to hear your thoughts on today's topic. Do you have any questions about the prophecy of Cyrus or other biblical prophecies? What topics would you like us to cover in future episodes? Let's keep the conversation going in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep exploring the celestial wonders of the Bible. God bless.